Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy Sensei Inc. And I am back with another One Piece video. Now today we are back with the third installment of this series talking about the Straw Hats and all of their fights post Wano all the way until the end of the series. We started off with Zoro, of course, Zoro the hype guy, but then we followed up with Sanji. Gotta talk about some Sanji after a Zoro video. But now we're here for the captain himself, Monkey D. Luffy. And there's a lot of these fights that all of us expect but there are a few options that could be at play here that I don't hear a lot of people talking about, but I still want to mention them because I think that they could be very interesting fights. But nonetheless, I want to talk about each fight individually like I've been doing in the series. And don't worry, I'm going to do all of the straw hats at this point. I've seen people asking for Chopper, Usopp, Rob, and Jinbei. I've seen all of it. Trust me, I do see it and I will do it for you guys. But before we get into the video, if you've made it this far, I just want to say I love and appreciate you all. And if you want to like this video, I'd appreciate that as well. The light like goal for this video is going to be 1,000 likes. If we could get there, that would be completely awesome. And if you want more One Piece content like this, make sure you subscribe and you turn on those post notifications. Let's get into the video. So first and foremost, let's talk about the Kaido fight because this hasn't finished yet. And I just want to talk briefly about how I think things are going to go with that. And if you guys want me to do like an actual video breaking down how I think Kaido will be truly defeated at this point, I'll do that as well. Just let me know. But Luffy is going to 1v1 Kaido in my opinion. Now hear me out. I don't think that the entire fight has to be a 1v1, but I do want to take some things into consideration when it comes to Kaido. He has already fought all of the scabbards and the supernova back to back. Of course, he did have help with the supernova because Big Mom was there. I think that if it was a 5v1, I think the supernova probably could have pulled it off. So Big Mom being there definitely helped it out. Now I'm not saying that Kaido would have got washed by the five supernova, but I think think that maybe just maybe because he was a little bit tired from the scabbard fight that they would have a good shot at taking him down especially if Zoro does scar him and if Luffy learns Conqueror's coding in the altercation which they both did so that still would have happened but I think that there's a possibility that either the straw hats will be involved in this last fight with Kaido or it'll be a Zoro and Luffy situation or a Luffy and Yamato situation these are three options I've been really fumbling around around in my head but I think no matter what happens I think the fight ends in a 1v1 and I say that because they say if it's a 1v1 bet on Kaido and what does Luffy do Luffy goes against the grain he changes things in the story Luffy is the one that overcomes things that typically wouldn't happen every time Luffy's the underdog he rises to the occasion and he always challenges the dreams of his opponents and he always challenges the world itself so if people are saying if it's a 1v1 bet on Kaido for Luffy to end the fight in a 1v1 and to win, I think that pretty much spits at the face of that statement, and I think it will be completely awesome. So in my honest opinion, it starts off as a group fight again, but it leads to and ends in a 1v1. Now, of course, after Kaido, there are a few that are obvious. I want to run through the obvious ones, or well, the ones that most people think are going to happen anyway. Big Mom is the next one. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably screaming at the bits right now because you hate when I say Big Mom is going past one people seem to hate Big Mom's character. I don't know if it's like a global thing, if people just have a distaste for Big Mom everywhere, or if it's in the States, I'm not sure. But I see a lot of people, and this could just also be the loud minority of Twitter and Instagram, things like that, but people don't like Big Mom. And I understand why people have a distaste with Big Mom because of the memeing and things like that. But she's a child, like she's a grown woman, of course, but she has a child mentality to the point where her own children take care of her, basically. And I think that Oda writes her character childishly like this for a reason and I think it's good writing so yeah you can dislike Big Mom but I do think she's well written my point in bringing up the writing though is because she has some unfinished business two things in particular Luffy said that he wanted to defeat all the Yonko so I think Luffy should be the one to defeat Big Mom especially since he told her after I'm done with Kaido I'm coming for you I would love to see Luffy actually finish what he set out to do. Two, she has unfinished business with the Giants, and we all know and all want to go to Elbeth. I mean, every 
everybody wants to go to Elbath after Wano, I'm pretty sure. There's some people that want to know about the Sabo stuff. That could be a whole thing, but I want to go to Elbath like a lot of you do. And even if you dislike Big Mom, which I understand y'all do, she does have some loose ends with the Giants and also the whole Mother Caramel situation happened there. But my main point is Luffy said that he's going to beat her, so I just think that Luffy should follow through on that. The next one, of course, is Shanks. Now, Shanks is a wild card, right? Because there is some of the community that thinks Blackbeard's going to kill Shanks before Luffy sees him. Another part thinks that he's going to kill Shanks after Luffy meets him. And then there's a whole other part that thinks Shanks isn't going to die at all. So I'm kind of in the boat of Blackbeard killing Shanks, but I don't know when it's going to happen if it happens before or after. I do want to see Luffy return the straw hat to Shanks, but it's weird because, but it's weird if you think about it, because what is he going to return the straw hats before the story's over? and then go from being straw hat Luffy to just Luffy? Like, is he gonna have no straw hat for the rest of the story? I just can't see that happening. Luffy without a straw hat is like Iron Man without Jarvis. It's like, it's like Thor without Monier. It's like Batman without money. Like, it just doesn't make sense, right? I think that he has to keep the straw hat, which means he will return the straw hat towards the end of the story, in my opinion, which can mean one of two things. One, it means Shanks isn't gonna die at all. Or two, it means that Shanks is gonna die and Luffy's not gonna be able to return the straw hat to him personally personally, but have to do it at maybe a grave site, which I could see happening. I think it could be an emotional moment, but let's just say you think Shanks is going to meet Luffy. I think that Luffy, if he does meet Shanks, is going to fight him. Now, whether it's going to be a Davy back fight between the red haired pirates and the straw hat pirates, eh, I don't know. Or if it's just going to be a duel, like kind of how Shanks and Mihawk would do in the past, just to kind of see and gauge where Luffy's strength is at. I could see it happening either way, but I did want to mention the Shanks altercation and kind of talk about each different scenario with Shanks just because I don't want to leave anyone out of the video. Now the next one up on the list is Akai Inu. So Luffy fighting Akai Inu is something that has been talked about a lot very recently too amongst some of my peers because Sabo is also involved in this conversation. Do you think it makes more sense for Sabo, the person that got the Mara fruit, to kind of inherit Ace's will and defeat Akainu as Ace, in quotations. Or do you think it makes more sense because Luffy had to witness Ace dying to Akainu that it makes sense for him to inherit Ace's will and then defeat Akainu? Or do you think it makes sense for them to double team Akainu? That's kind of the situation we're at here. Some people also think that Garp could possibly fight Akainu and defeat him. I don't think I'm in love with that idea. I threw around the idea of Garp losing to Akainu and my entire stream went crazy and got mad at me. So I'm not even going to talk about that in the video i don't want you guys disliking and getting upset with me because of it <laughs> but i do think that sabo being involved in the fight makes total sense i'm not saying that sabo has to be the one to completely defeat akainu 1v1 but him and luffy fighting akainu that makes a lot of sense to me it's like look ace's two brothers coming together and stopping the person that killed their brother in the first place they're both getting their revenge because i would hate for Luffy to just get revenge and not Sabo and I would really really hate for Luffy to not be involved at all and not get any revenge but I know that Luffy doesn't care about revenge you know what I mean I'm not saying that Luffy cares about revenge but when I use the word revenge I mean from the perspective of the viewer because really them defeating Akainu is kind of them getting revenge indirectly for us you know that Luffy doesn't care about revenge it's not the type of person he is he's not a vengeful person but if he sees Akainu especially if I Akainu was involved with a Sabo altercation, he's not going to let something happen to Sabo like something happened to Ace. It's just not going to happen. All in all, though, I think Luffy is going to fight Akainu. I think that he needs to. It makes total sense to me. I would hate for him not to be involved in that fight at all. The next one on the list, and this is like the last of the obvious ones, the ones people talk about mostly, is of course Blackbeard. The Blackbeard versus Luffy fight has been set up all the way from Jaya, man. The speech that Blackbeard gave in Jaya talking to Luffy, setting up their polar opposites kind of dynamic, lets me know that there was going to be a tug of war between Blackbeard and Luffy I knew early on that Blackbeard and Luffy were just going to be rivals in a way now they're not rivals in the sense of respect but they're indirectly rivals because of how opposite they are while chasing the same goal now I don't think Blackbeard just wants to be the pirate king but I mean getting the one piece that's a goal that they share in common and because of that there's going to be an obvious tug of war between them especially since they are just the 
exact opposites. They both want to get the one piece, but they're going to go completely different routes and are willing to do very, very, very different things to get there. For instance, Blackbeard will literally kill anyone he doesn't care as long as he gets to his goal. He killed his own crewmate Thatch, and of course he was resentful for it, but he said he was in my way and I had to do it. He also killed Whitebeard, so I mean, look, that's his father. Whitebeard is his dad, bro. Whitebeard took him in. So it's like, if he's willing to do that, then he's willing to do anything. Whereas Luffy, he makes friends, you know? He doesn't go out and try to make friends on purpose, but it just happens. He likes someone, he's like, oh, I want to be friends with them. But he will not kill. That's a big thing. So they go about things completely different, but I think that's what kind of brings them together for me and puts them in the same bubble. Of course, I don't have to go on for days and days about Blackbeard and Luffy's fight, but we all know that they're going to come to a head at some point, pause, and they are going to fight. It just is what it is. Now let's get into the more obscure ones, right? Or the ones that are like fan fix or like fan favorite fights, but like we don't know if they're going to happen or not. So first, CP0. CP0 is in Wano. A lot of people seem to think that maybe the leader of CP0 could combat Luffy after Kaido. A lot of people also talk about how they would like Sanji to be involved and maybe defeat the leader but i don't know how strong the leader is and that's the big question these guys are the shield of the world government they are the highest ranking of the cp members they are a complete covert ops team and my mindset is like if they're the shield right they're there to protect how can they be weak they can't be weak that doesn't make sense why would you get a shield that can't defend that just would completely defeat the purpose of having them which makes me think that they are strong but to what extent are they strong like could they beat luffy could they combat luffy could could they combat Yonkos? Because right now, if you see how they're acting, they're not even sweating. They don't even care. They're not worried at all. They're like, okay, whatever happens and whoever wins, that just is what it is. And I'm just like, hmm, why do you guys feel that way? And then I start thinking, these guys might be pretty strong. So I don't know if Sanji's gonna be able to beat the leader. I don't know if Sanji's strong enough to, I have no idea. Although I do like that idea of Sanji being involved in it. I just had to bring up the CP0 leader though, cause perhaps him and Luffy could butt heads if they are the final villain of Wano. Speaking of CP0 though, the next one is a fan favorite that everyone wants to see. And that is a rematch between Luchi and Luffy. Now this is a big one. Everybody talks about Luchi getting stronger post time skip he joined the CP0 which means he got stronger that's everyone's argument and I understand that it makes sense I mean One Piece is a moving world they're not stagnant characters just because Luffy defeats them it doesn't mean they don't do their own thing afterwards like we see Crocodile and Daz Bones doing their own thing Katakiri is probably going to be back in the story doing his own thing at some point Luffy has you know fought with Big Mom before in Whole Cake it wasn't like a real fight but he clashed with them. Big Mom's here doing her own thing. Like these antagonists do their own thing. Even after the main character fights them, they're in the world somewhere doing their own thing. We've seen Wapo at the Reverie. Like we see these characters, it's a moving world. It's an actual world of living individuals, moving pieces. So with that argument, people are like, okay, well, if Luchi moved to the CP0, that means he had to have gotten stronger. Now I want to see Luchi versus Luffy again. I think Luffy is completely folding Luchi. I'm not in this boat that Luchi is like top 15. Some people think Luchi's like top 20, top 15 in the world. I disagree. I think Luffy is going to fight him and fold him if they fight again. Like, I, I don't know how else to put it. I just don't have that much faith in Luchi. I'm not disrespecting Luchi, but I'm not in the boats of like thinking he's top 20, top 15. But I also, want to say I respect people that think he's that strong and I'm not discrediting your guys thoughts at all you know that I don't discredit people and their ideas and theories but if I disagree with them I just disagree with them the next one is a little different the giant king so there's a king of the giants and we're going to Elbeth I would wonder if Luffy before you know being friends with the giants what if something happened and the giant king gets frustrated with Luffy and I don't think this will be an actual fight but what if they're just a cool clash like what if the giant king is actually pretty strong he goes to punch at Luffy Luffy King Kong guns back and there's like a clash like a hockey that would be kind of cool to see now I mentioned this because I know there is a giant king and and we know that luffy and the straw hats may be going there so i just thought it would be cool to see and i had to mention that real quick i had to throw in a little fan one you know and by fan one i mean just something meathead sin wants to see but (laughs) 
now the next one on the list is kobe now this one is again a little different i don't hear a lot of people talking about a kobe and luffy fight but they are rivals kobe wants to reach the pinnacle of the marines while luffy wants to reach the pinnacle of being a pirate kobe wants to be an admiral and luffy wants to be the pirate king because of that i think it would be cool if like just how garp was chasing roger around the world kobe was always chasing luffy around the world imagine a situation where they're older in the epilogue of one piece and they actually get the fight that would be crazy bro admiral level kobe you know being a little older a little bit of older luffy fighting at this point luffy probably surpassing roger and whitebeard of those before him that fight would be awesome bro just imagine that but they're chasing the same dream just in different avenues so i think that because of their rivalry i would love to see them fight even at the end of the story before you know the epilogue happens i think maybe during the final war maybe kobe and luffy clash like they task kobe with going after luffy or something oh man the opportunity here oda please <laughs> but last on the list last but not least of course is emu a lot of people seem to think that emu might be the last villain of the story period that maybe umu is all powerful and might have an ocean devil fruits i hate that idea by the way but <laughs> but just thinking about emu being the most powerful villain is fine that's fine to think about it's kind of been set up already now i don't know if dragon and sabo is going to take care of emu i don't know emu could end up being the complete mastermind behind everything and i mean kind of is but or she <laughs> but my point is that emu could be the last villain and who is going to fight the last villain the last big bad of course the main character of course monkey d luffy especially if we find out that emu is like completely against the d-clan and like luffy's a reincarnate somehow or inherited the will of the entire d-clan he's joy boy and then we got joy boy versus the enemy of joy boy from the past like we've all talked about it time and time again that fight would be completely awesome but of course guys these are just my thoughts on all of the fights we will see luffy having after Wano until the end of One Piece. But if you think that I missed any of them or there's some that you think are completely missing, make sure you comment down below and let me know. Also, my Discord link is down there as well. Make sure you click that and join the Sensei Grand Fleet server. As always, I hope you all are staying safe and healthy during these trying times. This has been Sensei Inc. And I will see you all in the next video.